Hello, Aggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes from Edwin Henderson, W4BSR. He's been having some trouble with an antenna. Please help with some advice. I've been a ham for just about a year now and got my general license this past summer. Congratulations. I've been dissatisfied with my Comet GP6 vertical antenna on the roof for a while because the SWR on this dual band antenna is never lower than 2 to 1 on 23 centimeters. I think what you may have met, it's a dual band antenna on 2 meters and 70 centimeters, which is the 440 megahertz band. The 23 centimeters is up quite a ways around about 900 megahertz. The 2 meter band is good and often around 1.2 to 1. Yes, that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. Comet Service Department swears it's okay and shouldn't need adjusting, but I want to maximize my power output to reach far away 23 centimeter. Again, 23 centimeter. It possibly actually means 23 centimeter, which the antenna is not designed for. And system fusion repeater is better. Honestly, it's no better on 23 centimeters than my coat hanger homemade 2 meter ground plate I started out with. And that might be what you have to go to. I'm currently about 75 feet away from the antenna with RG8U, which is the thick stuff, very old stuff. Alpha uh, coax cable with Amphenol, PL259s, that's Amphenol is a very good brand. Those are probably silver plated, uh, running in the attic. Mm. And the attic can affect things like that. It's about 45 feet up, no nearby structures, nor on a hill. I have tested the setup multiple times for bad spots, loose connections, water intrusion, etc. It all looks good every time I've tested it. Well, yeah, it's possible due to the length of the coax. Actually, lossy coax means that the return loss, which is what SWR measures, it measures how much of the signal is returned and it's calculated directly from the return loss. So you send a signal out to a short or an open, it will be reflected and come back some number of dB, hopefully a minuscule number of part of a single dB of loss. The longer you make the cable, the more lossy it is. Therefore, the amount of reflected power is less, which will make the SWR look better than it really is. Okay, so cable's not going to make it worse. I suspecting a characteristic of the dual band antenna. Now, Please understand, you've been using 23 centimeters throughout your question. I think you mean 70 centimeters. What's better, a J-pole, dedicated 23 centimeter ground plane? And what about antenna splitters while we're on the subject? Yes, there are antenna splitters that will separate 2 meters and HF out from 70 centimeters and above. In fact, here is a picture of mine. This comes from the closet right outside the house, connected to ground where all the lightning arresters are. Can I add an antenna and avoid running a second section of coax? Yes. I'm going to make the assumption that every time you put 23 in there, you meant 70, 70 centimeters, which is the 420 to 450 megahertz band, which we commonly call 440. Uh, the lower portion, the first 10 megahertz of that is above line A in the U.S. and Canadian border. We can't use that one little segment. That lower segment is actually used for ham radio TV in the rest of the country. So some dual band radios actually start at 430 megahertz. You're not really losing anything because there's two TV channels in there. Let's assume that it's for 2 meters and 70 centimeters. They do make antenna splitters. I showed you that picture of that one. I have never had good luck with these long vertical so-called dual band antennas. The fact that you've got it down to two to one might be the best you'll be able to do on that antenna. Because however you tune that antenna, it affects two meters also. There's only really one adjustment and that's in the midsection where you can shorten or uh, lengthen a wire in there. A two to one SWR is not bad. Now, to get that, you're losing some power, that's true, but it's less than 3 dB, it's less than 2 dB, I think. And that's not going to make much difference getting into a repeater. If you're going to get into a repeater, you don't want to do so marginally. 
which would happen if you came up even with a beam antenna. And yes, they do make beam antennas for 70 centimeters. I have one outside. It's pointed toward Grand Junction and they can get the 70 centimeter repeaters up there pretty well. So um, I would say you may be doing the best you can. Uh, you could try a beam antenna on 440, which is only about this tall and it's, of course, vertical. You want the vertical polarization. And you'll be able to get to maybe some of those faraway repeaters with a, a nice little boost in signal. It's about 10 dB, so that takes 80 watts to 800 watts, factor of 10. And <laughs> if, that's, if that doesn't make it over the hill, nothing will. Now, remember on FM, it's one of those modes where you either make it or you don't. There's a very small range in between where you get a lot of noise, but you can still kind of make out the signal. So you want to be one side of that line or the other. You want to be on the side where you're going to get a good solid signal into the repeater. And that probably means a beam antenna. Alpha antennas, arrow antennas, and diamond antennas. Look at those and see if they have a nice one. The one I have out here, actually, there were no screws to put in. The thing unfolded and you fold out the the clamp. The clamp has a little hook on it to go over an existing screw and they give you a tightening nut on it. So it's very, very easy to put up. I have one right outside. So use a splitter, yeah. Even if you've got a dual band antenna, uh, the part of the antenna that works 440 will look like a very high impedance to two meters. So it won't use it very much. And second, the other way around too. 440 antenna will look like an open circuit to two meters. So there you go. I, I think you may find yourself where the thing that will help is height. The thing that will help might be a beam. Uh, if you're close to a hill, that hill's going to refract your signal down like this. And there will be areas where there's signal, no signal, signal, no signal, signal, no signal, and so on. So you might have to experiment a little bit if you want to get those. Or on the top of the hill, put a crossband repeater, something like that. Anyway, there you have it. I hope that's helpful. If anybody watching this channel uh, enjoys it, and if you'd like to support this channel, join. Join uh, the membership right there on YouTube. It's real easy to do. So until we next meet, 73.